Hi everybody, let's talk about neuromuscular testing in the train of fours. So in anesthesia, we use the train of fours to check out how paralyzed a patient is. It's approximation, and we'll get into that a little bit later. I just wanna cover the basics first. Now in anesthesia, there's gonna be a triad that you need to achieve. You need to achieve, ooh, not sure what that is. You need to achieve amnesia. You need to achieve analgesia. And you need to achieve a kinesis or paralysis. I just like to say a kinesis because of the three A's. So you want the patient rendered um, unconscious, you want them pain free, and you want them not moving. So we're going to be dealing with the a kinesis or the paralysis portion of this triad in this video regarding the train of force. So to achieve paralysis, we need to give a paralytic agent. What agent should we give? Well, we've got a whole list of things. We can use succinylcholine, we could use rapironium, we could use um, any, really any on this list. Now, there's two main categories of para paralytic agents. We've got the depolarizers and we've got the non-depolarizers. Now, the depolarizer, the, the main one that we use in use today, is going to be succinylcholine. And then our non-depolarizers, they're going to end in uh, with the same ending, neums. So, rocuronium, um, becuronium, pancuronium, uh, etc. So, this is kind of the suffix that they'll all assume. So, let's talk about the depolarizer par paralytic agent, succinylcholine. So succinylcholine is going to work um, primarily by depolarizing all of the receptors and preventing their repolarization. So what we're going to do is we're going to release a lot of acetylcholine. What it's going to do is we're going to flood those receptors, not give them a chance to uh, reset. So you'll see a lot of fasciculations. So when, when you inject succinylcholine into the patient, they're going to fasciculate. Depending on how much you give, you may see facial fasciculations or muscle twitches, and eventually um, you will achieve full paralysis because all of the muscles will have used up their acetylcholine, they'll have depolarized and prevented repolarization. So, uh, you know, succinylcholine will last about 10 minutes. So then you switch over to a non depolarizing agent which is, I'm just gonna use rocuronium, that's the one that I uh, use most often. Rocuronium is going to be a non-depolarizer. Now, what do I mean by that? Instead of depolarizing, causing those fasciculations, causing the muscle to contract, instead, what we're gonna do is, rocuronium prevents depolarization. So it'll act on the receptors, acetylcholine still gets released, However, it has nowhere to bind on the neuromuscular junction, um, thus you cannot propagate a muscle contraction. So acetylcholine still gets released from the nerve synapse. However, um, once in the synapse, it cannot bind to a target receptor because it is blocked, so there is no uh, muscle twitch. So that's kind of the main difference. Now, during the operation, we need to assess the degree of blockade. We need to uh, test on how well our block is going. The adductor pollicis longus muscle, which is in the arm, was originally used to set the train of force. However, intraoperatively, the hand is not always accessible. The hands are sometimes tucked under blankets, under the sterile field. So instead, the anesthesiologist can test what is available to them, which is the facial muscle. So since the patient's head is typically um, accessible to the anesthesiologist, we can assess the facial muscles. Two electrodes are placed on the lateral side of the face to stimulate the facial nerve, hopefully the buccal branch of the facial nerve. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and assess for facial twitches. When performed on a normal healthy patient who's received no paralytic agent, a twitch at the corner of the mouth, jaw, and forehead muscles should be uh, visible. You don't wanna include the the eye muscles, the orbicularis muscles, because that'll be a direct stimulation. Because remember, we're stimulating a nerve. We're stimulating a nerve. However, if we place our uh, place our 
electrodes on the muscle that will cause a direct stimulation of that muscle causing it to contract. However, we want to assess nerve function. We want to assess, um, we want to stimulate a nerve and see if it propagates a, a, a twitch. So what you do is we're going to assess the train of force. We call it the train of four monitoring because we're going to be assessing four consecutive uh, twitches every half second. So what that equates into is two hertz. So a twitch every half second, we're going to do four total, so it'll be a total of two seconds worth of assessment. Now let's explore what the train of fours means. So I uh, did not go to art school. This is my best representation of a train. We're going to have our probes in place, remember, on the side of the face, on the facial nerve. Now, on a patient who has had zero muscle relaxant, no uh, akinesis or paralytic agent, we would get four twitches because none of the receptors are blocked. So on a patient with zero drug, I'm just going to call it drug, you're going to have four twitches. This is because all of the receptors are open. So every stimulation will cause a contraction. Now we're gonna give a bunch of a paralytic agent. I'm not gonna specify doses, that's beyond the scope of this lecture. So I'm just gonna say, we're gonna give a lot of a paralytic agent. If we use the nerve stimulator and get four twitches, so give X amount. If we get four twitches that are all equal in strength, it means that we have 75% or less of the receptors that are blocked. I'm going to write that again, and I'm going to explain it again. 75% or less of the receptors are blocked. That is to say, if we have 25% of our receptors that are free, that are not being prevented by the rocky ronium. Remember, I'm gonna go back a few slides. Here, we're gonna block all four receptors. However, if we have 25% of the receptors still open, we'll, see, we'll still see four consecutive twitches that are equal strength. However, if we only see three twitches, that's gonna mean that we have only 85% or less. receptors that are going to be blocked. So if we see three twitches and then that fourth twitch is either absent or extremely diminished, we can assume that up to 85% of our receptors are blocked. Up to 85% of our receptors are blocked. Likewise, if we see two twitches before either a diminished response or the twitches just halt all together, we can assume that there's up to 95% or less. And then lastly, if we get one twitch, it means that we have 99%. And then lastly, zero twitches. If we give a ton of a paralytic agent and we get zero twitches, it means that we are completely saturated. It means that 100% of our receptors are gonna be blocked by the neuromuscular blocker. So what that means is we can assume that the patient is going to be fully paralyzed at this point. Why do we even give a paralytic agent? Well, the surgeon may need the body paralyzed so that way the patient doesn't move around while they're operating, or you can use it to, fa to facilitate the induction phase of anesthesia. So when intubating, um, you're gonna induce the patient, you're gonna intubate and the paralysis is gonna help with the intubation. So, of course, if we don't see any twitches, we can assume the patient is paralyzed. This is kind of our goal. However, we don't always need the patient completely paralyzed all the time. Um, so remember, 75% is four twitches. 85% is three. 95% is only one twitch. Uh, two twitches, 99% is going to be uh, one twitch visible, 
and then 100% of course is going to be no twitches observed. They are completely paralyzed. So if you see three to four twitches, now let me change color here. If you see three to four twitches, you might want to load up on a little more paralytic agent. Um, it means that the patient typically um, and clinically is not going to be completely paralyzed. The surgeon may notice that the body is still moving. It may be a more difficult intubation. In most cases, 100% blockade is not going to be needed. So we're going to assume that one to two twitches there is typically adequate for most surgical cases, indicating that the patient has most of their receptors blocked. For the most part, they're not going to be moving around. So I did uh, have some references. This is where I used for some of my information. The rest of it I learned um, through clinical experience. If you have any